I had better not see any of you slacking off. Otherwise, there's gonna be trouble. Cookie! Cookie, Ginger Angel! You better finish that truck in the next 40 seconds. Otherwise, I'm gonna write you up! Uh, yes, sir! I'll get it done! Jingle Sugarbelly snapped the last piece required to finish his toy. It was a simple female action figure that would be packaged with an assortment of clothes and accessories. He turned the doll over and flipped it in multiple angles to ensure the highest quality. Anything short of the best would result in severe punishment. Jingle set the action figure in a crate before him and then grabbed another packet of disassembled doll body parts. For just a moment, he paused to look at his colleagues around him. Jingle Sugarbelly sat at a long table, alongside dozens and dozens of other elves. The stools they sat on were quite uncomfortable, but that was to be expected as they were all slaves. Fluorescent lights hung above them all, and some of them flickered due to poor maintenance of electricity. The ground was uncovered concrete, while the windows along the wall were large. The perpetual winter that dominated their lands prevented any sunlight coming in or beautiful scenery to be viewed. Not that they got any breaks to look out the windows. On the other side of the tables were crates for the completed toys. Boxes of toy parts sat beside each of the elves, and the area in front of the workers was dedicated to toy construction. Each of the elves had to wear sleeveless overalls, work boots, work caps, and shaved heads. Elves had to have their bare arms exposed, so examples could be made. Several scars were up and down Jingle's biceps, forearms, and hands. He even had a nasty scar on his right cheek. Still, Jingle was far better than many of his fellow enslaved peers. There were two long tables set in the room, with the elves back to the walls. The crates of finished toys faced one another toward the interior of the room. A long avenue of space existed between the tables, which is where Stampy Pickletoe was paced. Stampy was a bastard. He was taller than most of the elves and brawny, which suited his purpose. His role in the grand hierarchy was overseer, or foreman, for the production floor. He wore a pair of black overalls and a black cap, Stampy held the handle of his bullwhip in his right hand, and the length of it dragged along behind him. Its grated rhythm set discordant vibrations throughout Jingle's body. He had tasted the sting of that whip on his flesh more times than he could count. Stampy stopped, snarled ever so slightly, and then brought his right hand up. The whip started to come up off the ground. Jingle's body tensed, and yet, he couldn't bring himself to close his eyes like the elves around him. Many of his peers couldn't bear to watch the whip tip coming for them, so they shut their eyes and braced themselves. The poor, unfortunate elf was Snooty Glitterpants, an ironic name for one of the sweetest elves Jingle had ever known. The whip tip Ow! bit into his chin, and blood began spurting from the wound. Instinctively, the elf leaned forward and dripped onto the open space of the table rather than on the plastic dinosaur. If you get any blood on that toy, I'll send your pathetic ass to old Saint Nick himself! Do you want that, you worm? N n no sir, P please, D don't send me there. Go get bandaged up, then you better get back to work. For causing this delay, you can add 20 more toys to your daily quota. You had better not fail. Snooty Glitterpants carefully maneuvered around his toy as not to drip blood on it. He rushed out of the room while holding his hand to his open wound. Get back to work! 
You lazy shits! Jingle took a small breath and then delved back to work. His mind blinked, and he only thought about the process. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, head, done. Repeat, done. Short breath for his sanity. Repeat, done. Pray for the sweet release of death. Repeat, done. Hours seemed to melt away, and yet Jingle couldn't afford to slip an inch. Slipping meant getting whipped, or worse, written up. Too many of those, and you were sent to explain yourself to the big man himself. Few who were sent for disciplinary action ever came back. Their bodies were never recovered. Those who did manage to return were broken echoes of who they once were. Jingle's shoulders sagged, and he let out a small sigh of relief. He wasn't the only one. All right, you're all done for the day. Get out of here. None of you had better be late tomorrow, or else... Jingle rose from his stool and winced as his muscles popped. His butt was sore and it radiated with tension as he started walking along with everyone else. No elf said anything, not when they were still under the hateful watch of Stampy the Bastard. As soon as Jingle and the others were out of the production floor, they passed by several warehouse doors. The warehouses were where raw materials were stored, as well as partially completed toys and other such resources. There was a small exam room for medical treatments, reserved for unlucky elves who were dealt blows from Stampy's whip. A crusty old nurse named Bubbles Candy Fluff stood in the doorway to the medical exam room. She wasn't mean like Stampy, but old Bubbles had lived her whole life under the tyrannical regime. Whenever she provided medical attention, it was done with icy mechanical efficiency. Would Jingle eventually end up like that? His parents, goddess rest their souls, certainly had given up on life and became nothing more than lifeless drones to serve cruel Kris Kringle. Eventually the elves came to the coat room where all their winter coats were stored. With a sense of weariness, Jingle slipped on his coat, zipped it up, and then moved outside through the front doors. A darkened sky stretched overhead, although the stark white of the snowy grounds glistened in the light of the many lampposts. The lampposts were the only guide points amidst the constant snowfall. Jingle couldn't see further than 90 feet before the blanket of white. In a single file line, the elves marched down the path toward the mess hall. The mess hall was a two mile trek through the snow simply because Santa enjoyed the anguish of the elves. That's what his father said, anyway. The coats they wore kept them warm from the elements, which was another small benefit. Not a luxury, as survival wasn't a luxury, nor was it a guarantee. Faint outlines of the one-story structure emerged from the white snowfall. Jingle's stomach gurgled with urgency for they only got two meals a day, breakfast and dinner. The mess hall was illuminated with a string of rainbow-colored lights that lined the edge of the roof. To the right and left of the mess hall were the individual huts belonging to the elves. Jingle's hut was off to the right. Upon entering the mess hall, there was another coat room where the elves could hang their coats. Coat hooks were numbered and assigned to each of the slaves. The mess hall interior was set up like a giant cafeteria with a giant kitchen in the back area. Of all the elves working for the dreadful Santa Claus, the kitchen elf slaves were the kindest. Smaller round tables were set up throughout the cafeteria with little chairs. Today's meal was pork steaks, mashed potatoes, and seared veggies with unlimited spiced apple cider. Just kidding, that would have been wonderful. Today's meal was the same as it always was. Gruel with chunks of meat, a half loaf of bread, and melted snow water. 
Jingle got his bowl full of gruel, his bread and water, and sat down at a table on the far side of the mess hall. Cookie Ginger Angel, Snooty Glitter Pants, and a third friend, Pixie Snazzle Shoes, sat down beside him. Snooty, how are you doing? That whip wound looked pretty deep. It was really deep. Damn that stampy. All I did was take too long making sure the dinosaur was assembled properly. It's not fair. I was afraid he was going to hit me. Or worse. I was afraid I was going to get written up. You know I have two write-ups for taking too long already and one more and... Ah! One more and you take a one-way trip to sit on Santa's lap. <gasps> no, 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 no. I don't want to sit in Santa's lap. I don't want anything to do with that monster. No elf does. <sighs> I've heard terrible rumors about what happens to unlucky elves who have to stand before the boss. Want to Annie half of our loaves of bread for the worst story? One by one, each of the other elves nodded. I heard he loves inflicting pain and suffering to elves who can't keep up with their workloads. There's this special hidden alcove in his office where he stores all his whips, chains, and other dastardly torture devices. I've heard that he trained his reindeer to eat elf flesh, which is why they have magic powers to fly. I I've heard that he actually takes the b bodies of elves who can't keep up, and he turns them into zombies. He lets them roam out in the wastelands beyond the huts. That's why any elf who tries to make a break for it and escape is never heard from again. What if they're never heard from again because they get out? <laughs> Do you really think he would let any of us escape? Yeah, <laughs> You know, zombies are not. There's nothing really out there. Living, anyway. Uh, probably not for hundreds, if not thousands of miles. An elf would starve to death before they even reach the ocean. And then what would they do? No doubt, he would swoop down to collect the wayward elves, too. Yeah, you're probably right. No elf could escape on foot. So, what's your rumor? My rumor? <sighs> I heard that he knows when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad, or good. He's always watching us through the use of sleeper elf agents who tell him all of the things we do. No way. No elf would actually turn their peers to that monster. No way, no how. Yeah, but what if he's right? What if there are elves who would willingly betray their friends and family? I mean, it's possible. Think about that bastard Stampy. He's more than willing to put his boot on our necks. Maybe others have been turned to serve our master in more discreet ways. That's what he wants. Santa wants us to be suspicious of one another. It's the only way he can ensure our continued slavery. However, it's about to change. Uh, what do you mean? Pixie peeked over their shoulders and then leaned in over their food. Their eyes grew larger. The hairs on the back of Jingle's neck wiggled wildly, and he found himself gazing around to act as a kind of unspoken lookout. Do you all know Bobble's Starlights from shipping? Yes, I know her. She and I used to work in the warehouses together last winter. Well, that's before I got in trouble and was sent to the assembly line as punishment. I actually don't know her. Neither do I. What I tell you has to remain a secret, okay? Good. So, as for Bobbles... Pixie spooned some gruel in their mouth and paused. They swallowed, and then grinned at Jingle. I guess you won, since yours was the most unsettling. Are you really gonna take our bread from us? No, we can just forget the bet. Keep your bread, we all need our strength. Uh, tell us what you were gonna tell us. Yes, tell well, Bobbles is the leader of... of Candy Cane Lane. At least the cell here. A white-hot panic flared in Jingle's chest as he looked around again. A cold sweat started to cover the surface of his skin. Both Cookie and Snooty's eyes were a little wider, 
and yet they tried to conceal their alarm through shoveling gruel in their mouths. That's right. Candy Cane Lane. The Liberation Rebellion that's been going on since our parents' generation. I thought all the members of Candy Cane Lane were massacred during the raid on their hidden base. Yeah, I had an uncle who was a part of it. He was publicly executed. Are you saying some of them survived? Not exactly. And not from here. Bobble secretly came here from another site where Candy Cane Lane is more prominent. No one can know they are here, okay? I promise. I won't tell a soul. Agreed. <laughs> you won't tell either, will you, Jingle? Of course not. Don't forget, I'm the one who put forth a rumor about elf spies. Outside of you, I'm suspicious of everyone else. I don't ever want someone suspecting me of being a spy. So I keep to myself. Okay, listen. We can't talk about it here. It's too risky. Come to my hut after dinner. I'll tell you there. I'll be there. Let's finish our meals and then get on with it. My curiosity is trying to claw its way from behind my eyes. We shouldn't leave all at once, otherwise someone might suspect. <laughs> wow, Jingle! I, I had no idea you were so much of a worry word. <laughs> How long have you known about this rumor? I mean, you weren't always like this. Oh, I heard about it last month or so. It has been keeping me on my toes, and has forced me to watch what I do, say, and sometimes even think. We could totally use your caution in Candy Cane Lane. You're a member too? Yeah, but I only just joined in the last couple of weeks. No more talk here, okay? Pixie Snazzle Shoes ate the rest of their food, kept the bread, and then made their way to the exit. There was a bin by the door for discarded trays. Cookie was the next to leave. Jingle decided to be the third. He placed on his coat and then walked outside into the cruel winter night. Snow was falling a little heavier, and the wind nipped at his cheeks with ravenous malice. Winters this far north were always horrid, although he had never experienced anything else. Jingle had heard the rumors of the vast green lands that were in other places. A deep weight had settled within him. Candy Cane Lane. To some, they were heroes and freedom fighters who opposed the machinations of Santa the Devourer in multiple ways. Sometimes they were responsible for helping elves escape. Other times, they did things that earned their other reputation. According to the official stance given by Santa's own PR department, members of Candy Cane Lane were terrorists. What sort of secrets would Pixie share? What would it mean for the four of them as a whole? Jingle got to Pixie's hut, and he looked around cautiously. It would be easy for a neighbor to see him and wonder why he was there. Elves were not barred from pairing up and starting families. But if Cookie Ginger Angel also came this way, and Snooty Glitter Pants after him, what would the neighbors think? Maybe it might be something as innocent as an orgy. Or then again, perhaps their neighbors would guess it was for something nefarious. Pixie stood inside their hut, with the door slightly open. They waved Jingle to come in. As soon as he got closer, he entered swiftly. The interior of Pixie's hut was bare, as most elves' homes. A small bed was off to one side of the one-room chamber. There was a bathroom and a small wood stove to one side. There was a small dresser for clothes. Aside from that, there was nothing else. Snooty came a few minutes later. Cookie and Pixie sat on the bed, while Snooty and Jingle sat on the floor. So, uh, what's this about? <laughs> I mean, what can Bobbles do exactly to free us from our life of servitude? As you know, Santa's actual house is not here. It's at the main settlement, and we are on the outskirts of the entire domain. Bobbles came here from another settlement, on the other side of the known territory. Now, according to her, they took over that whole settlement and replaced all the foremen with their own agents. That whole settlement is 
three. Although they are still pretending to be under the fat man's boot heel. Uh, are you serious? That's amazing! Can, can, can Bobbles help us escape there? She could, but she won't. <sighs> well, why won't she? It's obvious. She wants to liberate this settlement too, doesn't she? You were always one of the smartest elves I've ever known. Jingle's right. Bobbles needs people here to keep up the illusion, but also for another important reason. What other reason? We're planning an attack on the administrative center. One in which we take out all of the foremans, leaders, and everyone who willingly serves that horrid monster. Y you can't be serious. You're talking about actual violence and death. Yes. If we want to free ourselves from Santa's tyranny, we have to fight just as fiercely as how he treats us. But Bobbles and I can't do it alone. Will you help us? Snooty Glitter Pants hopped to his feet, and he balled both fists into tight bundles. Yes! I will do whatever you need! So long as I get to be the one to give it to that bastard Stampy! Ah! Cookie slowly stood up from the bed. Ooh, ooh, I want to help too! Look, I don't want to live in fear anymore. And if this Bobbles can really free us, then I'm with her. And what about you, Jingle? Jingle stood up and then looked into his friend's eyes. A small smile appeared under his nose. His insides quaked a little due to the many thoughts buzzing around his head. Slithers of apprehension, unwillingness, and resentment festered in him. Jingle didn't want this. Not this. And yet, here he was, faced with a pair of grim choices. No matter what he decided, elves were going to die. Jingle's smile remained, but a great pain throbbed with absolute vulgarity. If this is the choice you all wish to make, then I will walk with you as long as I am able to. The nipping of the wind was still quite annoying, but then again, it didn't compare to the monstrous pressure that lived in Jingle's chest. He had volunteered to leave first, as to not alert suspicion. At least, that's what he told them. Jingle Sugarbelly moved up to the door of his hut, took out his key, and then unlocked the door. There was a curtained-off area right before the front entrance, as to conceal the interior from prying eyes. As soon as the front door was locked behind him, Jingle moved past the curtain. The hut was well furnished with elegant furniture. A large bed rested against the left wall. A small kitchenette was against the right wall beside the bathroom, with a small island countertop dividing the kitchenette and the rest of the hut. Thick rugs covered the floors. A large space heater was against the far wall. Resting beside it, was a small table that had a golden telephone on top of it. Jingle walked over to the phone and picked it up. It rang twice before someone else picked up. State your name and settlement number. This is Bernie Icepick, and I'm at settlement number 56. Ah, yes. Your code name is... <laughs> Jingle something or other, right? <laughs> What do you have to report? There is a cell of Candy Cane Lane in Settlement 56, and another unspecified settlement is completely compromised. Bobbles Starlights, an elf who works in shipping, is the leader, and they are planning an attack on the Administrative Center. The other known conspirators are Cookie Ginger Angel, Pixie Snazzy Shoes, and Snooty Glitter Pants. Great job. We shall dispatch a team to collect the four of them. Remain in your living quarters until you hear back from me. We are going to do a purge of that entire settlement, as well as the other compromised one, as soon as we extract information from this... Bobbles. I will recommend that you be relocated to another settlement with a promotion in my report to Santa the Devourer. Purging the whole settlement? Do you really think that's necessary? Of course it's necessary. Based on your intel, at least one other settlement is completely lost to us. That cannot be left unrewarded. This Baubles is quite skilled at rallying elves to their side. There's no telling how many elves are compromised. 
Stay in your hut no matter what you hear. The purge will begin sometime tonight. I understand. May his jolliness live forever. May his jolliness live forever. The line died, and Bernie Icepick hung up the phone. There was no longer a need to adorn the false alias of Jingle Sugarbelly. Jingle was going to die in the purge along with his friends. Who was he going to be in his next settlement? Maybe Dancer Mooncake? Or maybe Caramel Wrapping Paper? No, those wouldn't do. Bernie had plenty of time to think up a new name. All night, in fact. He walked over to his refrigerator and pulled out his dinner. An already prepared plate of pork chops, mashed potatoes, and assorted veggies. He also pulled out the bottle of whiskey from one of the cupboards. This was going to be a long night. May his jolliness live forever.